Blender fanboys are real guys, they are real and you can't debate them because they are very loud. These guys seem to have an issue with every software pricing system. There is this heated argument on Reddit about the newly released ZBrush and I hear a lot of ZBrush users are jumping onto Blender. Look, I don't have an issue with that but I think a lot of dudes are getting the whole thing wrong. Now, is the pricing system a bit strange? Yes. Do I have a problem with the pricing system? No. I only had a problem with ZBrush falling into the hands of Magazine. That was my only problem. But after looking carefully at what Magazine is doing with ZBrush within this short while, I'm convinced ZBrush just took off. Also, the reputation ZBrush has built over the years, its reliability, and the mere fact that it has all the necessary requirements to function effectively within a pipeline. Look, if ZBrush were to go for 2K a year, it still wouldn't push the industry to look for an alternative. And it's interesting how a lot of Blender users think Blender is an alternative to ZBrush on every level. I took time to explain why Blender can't fit into an industry pipeline in this video. And a couple of problems I made mention of were one, big tools integration problem due to proprietary code issues. Two, limited in and out support. And that mostly has to do with the GPL. Remind you, it's the same GPL that grants Blender users the freedom to use Blender however they like. Now, a big question to all Blender users, should Blender acquire a paid license so it could have a bridge code written to enable it flow easily with bigger industry tools? I don't know. You tell me. I can't imagine waking up to see a price tag on Blender. Dudes would freak out. Number three is going to be limited FBX support. Blender's FBX can't handle dense export and a typical example would be machine specs even the newly 1490 gpu paired with an 11 generation i9 cpu still can't handle more than 120 million polygons if we are to move from the top level to the street level when i say street i mean small firms freelancers and some other mid studios okay if we are to move onto the street this is where we can argue blender versus zbrush because who cares about what problems right dudes are running cracked softwares plugins and stolen codes here most of these dudes won't even need more than 20 million and above polygons for nothing a simple 7 generation i7 paired with a 2080 ti is just enough for a lot of these street workers look if you are to take advice based on what people say on the street you are doomed because the marginal difference is huge from top to the street level. Yes, Blender is awesome, but let's not replace it with ZBrush simply because Magazine decided to pull some beer tactics on their pricing. Magazine has its headquarters in Germany and these guys brush their teeth with beer each morning. So what do you expect? Enough of all this, I actually don't buy into the Blender versus ZBrush debate. Okay, let's talk about ZBrush 2023 and most of the updates that it came with. Now I took time to break down some of the updates I find very important into very simple terms so each and everybody can understand this is the most exciting news amongst them all this update will be the first that many users have had to pay for zbrush how exciting could that be right also zbrush 2022.7 will be the final free update for perpetual license holders so now it's either you jump on 2023 or get stuck in the past. The version of Redshift integrated into ZBrush supports both interactive and bucket rendering. Now, this allows users to work on their scene in real time and make adjustments as they go along. It also uses a caching system where rendering data is stored the first time a user renders a scene. This speeds up the rendering process for subsequent test renders as the data doesn't have to be recalculated each time, making the rendering process more efficient. This also allows users to quickly test out default lighting and material setup without having to wait for the entire scene to be rendered each time. This is good, right? Another feature under this will be the render recall. Now, this feature allows users to go back to the material and camera settings of the previous render within the same work session. This can greatly speed up the process of look development by allowing users to quickly switch between different render setups without having to manually adjust the settings each time. It's particularly useful for artists who are working on multiple renders at once or experimenting with different lighting and material setup. It enables its users to save time by allowing them to go back to previous setup if they decide it was better than the current one or if they want to compare it to the current one. ZBrush Redshift integration also allows users to perform rendering on both CPU and GPU. This gives users the flexibility to choose the best option for their specific workflow and hardware. However, 
It is worth noting that, similar to the version of Redshift integrated into Cinema 4D, the default option for Redshift rendering in ZBrush is CPU rendering. This means that if users want to use GPU rendering, they will have to enable it manually in the settings. The reason for this is that GPU rendering can be more demanding on the hardware and not all computers have the necessary components to support it, but the users still have the option to use GPU rendering if their system can handle it. In order to use GPU rendering feature on Redshift within ZBrush, users will need to have a separate subscription. Now, this is where the problem lies, right? There are two ways to do this, either by subscribing to Redshift directly, which currently costs 45 per month or 264 per year, or by subscribing to the entire Magazine 1 product range which includes ZBrush along with other magazine products. This is because GPU rendering can be more resource intensive and require additional licensing fees. So by requiring a separate subscription fee, users are able to choose the most cost effective option for their specific need and budget. Additionally, it ensures that only users who are able to take advantage of the GPU rendering feature pay for it, rather than it being bundled into the price of the software for all users. And I completely agree with this decision. Another new feature designed into ZBrush 2023 is Slime Bridge, a tool designed to create connections between different parts of a sculpt. It is called the Slime Bridge because it is particularly useful for creating organic connections such as strands of saliva on a zombie's jaw, as shown in the image above. Using this tool is quite simple. Users just need to mask out the two parts of the surface they want to connect, and ZBrush will automatically generate tendril-like connections between them. There are sliders that allow users to control the branching and surface tension of the connection, giving them more control over the final result. This feature is particularly useful for sculptors and artists working on organic models, such as characters and creatures, as it allows them to easily create realistic and believable connections between different parts of the model without the need for complex modeling techniques. Another significant change in ZBrush 2023 is the update to ZRemesher, which is ZBrush's Retopology toolset. The update includes a new caching system where ZBrush generates a cache the first time the user remeshes a model. This will significantly reduce the time needed for any further remeshing operations. This new system allows users to quickly switch between different retopology settings without having to wait for the model to be remeshed each time. This saves a lot of time for artists who are working on high polygon models and need to make adjustments to the retopology frequently. ZBrush's masking sub palette gets a new auto region button, which fills contagious regions of an object's surface between existing masks. Users can control the infilling process when working with complex masks by painting rough guide strokes onto the surface of the sculpt to identify which gaps in the existing mask ZBrush should fill. Sculptris Pro has also received a new feature called Subdivide Size Slider. This slider allows users to selectively alter the density of specific parts of a mesh. This means that users can now increase or decrease the level of detail in certain areas of their model without affecting the rest of the mesh. This feature is particularly useful for sculptors who are working on high polygon models as it allows them to focus their effort on the areas that require the most detail without having to increase the overall polygon count of the entire model. It also allows for more efficient use of resources because users can now focus on the important part of the modeling without wasting resources on areas that don't require much details. Okay, so I think I'll stop here because I'm running late for work. I have to leave. You can read more on this from the ZBrush website. That's where they have everything listed out for you. Last one, ZBrush has made some fine tuning for Apple M series users. Kindly read also on that from their website and their pricing system. ZBrush 2023 is compatible with both Windows 10 Plus and Mac OS 10.14 Plus. For users who want to purchase the perpetual license, it costs 895 USD. For those who prefer a subscription based model, it costs $39 a month or $300. 59 per year. This release makes it the first time in the history of ZBrush that users with the existing perpetual license are required to pay for updates. Meanwhile, in the past, updates from previous versions were available at lower cost. 
I mean, the reason for upping these prices um, could be justified by the features and development they have to put into ZBrush. But hey, like usual, I mean, people will get used to it as time goes on and the complaints will be minimal. Until my next video, peace out.